you've got a, a rallying cry in, in your chapter on immigration, and you coined this um, this acronym ETL. Yes, enforce the laws. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a simple, common sense idea that mm -hmm. we should enforce the laws we have on the books, and and. I recount how in this debate, and, and you were instrumental in this, how it, it is that when you say you want the laws enforced, you become nativist, you become uh, xenophobe, you become uh, racist, you become like uh, Linda Chavez, our, our conservative colleague, columnist, you know, akin to like Nazi Germany. And we're saying enforce the laws so we can still have some credibility when we say we're a nation of laws. And uh, if you enforce the laws and build the fence, they will not come. If you enforce the laws against our employers, they will not you know, risk life and limb to come across our border. It's not going to happen. And uh, sometimes I like to turn things into simple concepts. So we're going to, for the Power of the People tour, get a bunch of ETL uh, T-shirts printed up and hand them out across the, uh, across the country. I because it's it. a simple, simple concept. I want one. Yeah, simple <laughs> concept, exactly. Um, you were one of the strongest, toughest voices during the amnesty debate earlier this spring, yes. um, and we won that one. I yep. mean, and that was a power to the people moment. That, absolutely. Yes. That, that's an illustration of what we can do. And it, it was a great case study in, in what people can do. And when there, there is this synergy between talk radio, grassroots conservatives, yep. um, the right side of the blogosphere. But, but now we've got this receding back. I mean, in the Bush White House certainly still does not understand. No, well, they're really mad. Loss. They're really mad at you and, and that, me. Exactly. So I'm happy to have be mad at in this in this what, regard. We're, it, we're with the people and they're not. Was it a Pyrrhic victory then? Well, I, I I don't think so because I think people at that point in time were were pretty demoralized about where we have we have come politically. And I think that was really a shot in the arm to a lot of people, average people out there. I mean, we played the song Celebration, you know, after, <laughs> after that thing went down in flames and people probably thought I was, you know, I was uh, being uh, n less than magnanimous in, in victory, but it was, I truly believed it was a vic victory for the American people. It was. I truly believed that it was their moment, and it, I was just a conduit for the way they were feeling about this. And for people, Michelle, with their busy lives, to send multiple faxes, to call friends and tell friends to call the White House, and to, to jam the congressional switchboard, mm -hmm. that's like grab the pitchfork and like, you know, let's 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 be activists here, but in a positive way. It's, it's people saying, "Look, I want to have legal immigration in this country. We're for it. It's a great ethic, and new immigrants are among the most patriotic." But don't don't play the scam on us that you're going to say you're going to oh we'll enforce the borders if if you have the path to legalization, if you have temporary worker card, if you let gang members uh, become uh, citizens by writing a, the permission slip to themselves. I mean, all of it was ridiculous, and through blogs and through talk radio and through a few uh, great conservative media outlets that the entire elite structure which is what power of the people is all about exposing entire elite structure was totally knocked off its heels i mean they were blown back by the fury of this country but that's righteous fury that was turned into positive action right. and that's and that's something that i think telling you that's it's I'm gonna make sure it's not a Pyrrhic victory I mean because people people want this thing done they right. want it enforced they don't want to talk about amnesty until the borders enforced period Rasmussen Gallup all these polls say the same thing mm -hmm. so we have the facts on our side and we have the passion on our side so I think that's a good thing I'm glad you mentioned the matricula consular card oh okay I asked Newt Gingrich about this at CPAC and yeah. he punted he didn't know what no, it was. no they don't want to ask uh, same, thing talk. With, same thing with Mitt Romney and I, I don't know which scares me more that they would know about it and not want to talk about it, or that they're completely ignorant about this scam and the, and the national security danger it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a huge boon to all these illegal aliens who are using it to open bank accounts. And no, we have made this country, you know, completely hospitable to people whose first decision coming in was to break our laws. We've made it easy for them. We've allowed them to have their own identification system going over the heads of DMVs across this country, and you know, they're of course they're opening bank accounts. Of course they're you know they're spending money they have they have charge cards and all that and and as you know the business elites love that money 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 right. spend the money it's filtered all across the country and it's good for business so it's got to be good for america well no it it necessarily is not good for america as we saw with the new jersey murders as we saw with uh the the relatively recent news about that liberian national who uh raped that seven-year-old girl was let out ten thousand dollar 
uh, uh, bond. It looks like he was here illegally. I mean, there, there's family after family in this country has been ravaged by violent crime committed by um, illegals who were in this country should never have been here. And I've never heard the White House adequately address that problem. No, never. They haven't. No. Um, let's turn to um, our pornified culture. Oh, this is the fun part of the this, book. Yes, you know, it's saving just, our pornified culture. I, I share every bit of passion that you have. Just I throw my hands up in the air. I've got these two young kids myself and trying to protect them from it. Um, you debunk the just turn it off yes. meme. Um, how do you do that? Well, first of all, you can't turn it off anymore because it's everywhere. It's You want to go to the mall and get your kids a new pair of shoes uh, for, for school, and you walk by the Abercrombie & Fitch window, and it's black and whites of three girls and three guys, or, or, or one guy. It looks uh, clearly the implication on a lot of these sexy photos is, you know, group sex. Um, everything's very sexualized. Two girls with their pelvises touching each other and the big poster hanging in the in the uh, window. I mean, forget Victoria's Secret. Victoria's Secret, at least you know what that is. Now it's like you, you, can, you, can, you can get the connection to, uh, to porn pretty much at a candle shop at this point in, in the United States. So, so you, whether it's going to the mall or driving down the road and, and you know, the, the big uh, erectile dysfunction billboard up there or the, or the sex club billboard, it's really something that we, we have to confront. And it's another issue, Michelle, where, like with immigration early on, people thought there's nothing we can do. There is no effect we can have on this culture. I think there are a couple of things we can do. I think parents can say, look, don't give me this argument, just turn it off. It's coming onto our cell phones soon, live porn, by the way. Mm -hmm. It's coming onto our cell phones. It's coming on pop-ups -up, pop that get around filters on computers. It's on regular broadcast television during a sports event, like a college football game. You have to see the stupid Cialis commercial with the guy throwing the uh, football through the tire. You know, that's uh, something we really have to, do, you know, explain to our kids when they're, you know, four and five years yeah. old. So it's everywhere. So you say, look, okay, since it's everywhere, what can I do? What are the guardrails I can put up? What are the structures I can put up? Lots of parents are going the extreme. They're saying, no TV. Or TV with no cable and a lock on it, and we'll watch the DVDs as a family together. And we're going to totally immerse you guys, you kids, in the classics from kids' classics to dramatic classics to musical classics to uh, wonderful theater, anything you can, local theater. There's plenty to immerse your family in that actually gives kids a baseline of understanding of quality, and that's really positive. I mean, that's a positive thing you can do. Um, but the, I've got to say, the, uh, the, the no TV in the uh, kids' rooms, the no laptop computers in kids' rooms, parents are taking back their power as parents and saying, uh-uh, not mm -hmm. going to do it. We're, we're not going to do it. We have one computer or two computers in the central area. We have a, a scan on that computer. We will know everywhere you've been. So you want to go on one of these sites, you go right ahead and we'll know. You've got you to be the parent, not the uh, friend. And I, you know, I don't have kids. I'm the godmother to um, a, a few children, and, and I'm around kids all the time. And uh, parents that are struggling and parents who are doing an amazing job. So I'm kind of an, an observer. But I really think I've been able to observe what works mm -hmm. for uh, families who are they're juggling everything. Yeah. As you know, the, the kids practice, the school, the, the doctor's appointments, working. And then how do I get through this culture? How do I do it? Yeah. You know, when Brittany in, in Paris and all these people are held out as, as these uh, objects of fascination instead of objects of pity. Mm -hmm. and, it's, it's, and it all goes back to the family. Right. I mean, it all goes back to what the family is going to decide, decide is right for them.